our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. This is a praise um, for deliverance from oppression. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor and a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds the song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Our New Testament reading from Matthew 22 verses 1 through 14, the parable of the wedding banquet. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. 
Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, and those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In just a few weeks, um, it's hard to believe that uh, the first week of November, uh, I'll be headed back to Kansas City for a few days and have the uh, honor and privilege to officiate at my youngest brother's wedding. And uh, it will certainly be a strange thing uh, with masks and all that stuff uh, to to do a wedding, but it will be a, uh, a great opportunity for us to get together and celebrate something positive. I don't know about you, but we all need something positive to celebrate. Uh, this, you know, my brother, um, called me several months ago uh, and asked me to uh, officiate at his service. And the first thing uh, that came to my mind was, dad can't be there. And in fact, I couldn't even say anything in response because those tears and the emotion caught in my throat and my brother actually thought that we had got cut off on the phone. And he said, are you okay? And I said, I know I am. I'm happy for you. I'm excited, but I know dad would want to be there. Weddings are in many families one of the main reasons that families get together these days. Unfortunately, the other one happens to be funerals. Weddings are, of course, the joyous occasions, the time that you get together and you celebrate the, the couple together and all the, the excitement and the beginning of the new life together for the couple. And it will be a joyous celebration. But there will be an empty seat at the table. And it will be hard. And it will be hard in, for many reasons, one of which that we haven't had the opportunity to get together yet and hug each other after my dad's passing. 
So in many ways, this wedding is going to be a, a little bit of both, bitter and sweet. But I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait. I can't wait because my future sister-in-law, Lauren, just contacted me the other day and said, again, we're just getting a last-minute head count for the food. My favorite part. I'm praying that there will be cheesecake. I hope you're listening, Lauren. I'm kidding. I won't get up and leave if there's no cheesecake. Probably. No, it is something about food. Can you actually have a family gathering? Can you have a celebration without food? Absolutely. Amen. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine Christmas without food, without a turkey, exactly. Thanksgiving, Easter, a wedding without a feast. You can understand Jesus' parable there were those who were invited to the wedding of the king's son. What an honor to be invited to that banquet. But they ignored the invitation. And they killed the messenger. Yeah, I'm sure the people listening to Jesus' message we're thinking originally, ooh, what an awful story. Until after they began to realize that maybe he might be talking about them. The exciting part about this wedding banquet for this king's son is that even though the original recipients were not all that thrilled to be involved, This king sent his messengers out again and invited anyone and everyone to come to his son's wedding banquet. Isn't that a beautiful image? Not just anyone and everyone, but the good and the bad, Jesus goes so far as to say. Wow. Wow. The good and the bad are invited to this banquet. And so the wedding hall was filled with guests. And of course, there is this one man who comes in unprepared. If you get an invitation to a wedding, you ought to show up prepared. And of course, it didn't go well for him. Many were called, but few were chosen, Jesus said. But think about it. Who was called and who was chosen? Anybody off the street. Anybody off the streets, those are the people that Jesus invites to his wedding banquet. It's a family gathering. And at his banquet, we are reminded of the words of Isaiah. At his banquet, God is making a feast of rich food, of well-aged wines. Yes, Marilyn, wine. She's going to get me later. A feast filled with marrow, with things that are, is, things that are good. 
And on this mountain, he will destroy death. You see, this is what gives me hope. This is what gives me courage and strength. This is what is going to make my brother and future sister-in-law's wedding a joyous occasion, is that even though we will miss my dad, we know that God has destroyed death for my dad. And for you. And I'm trusting that he'll be smiling on us that day. And his heart will be glad. And he will be celebrating with us at that great heavenly feast. You see, that's what this table is all about. This table is a feast of celebration, recognizing that God has conquered death. And this table joins us together with all around the world, all who have gone before us and all who will come after us. For this table is a foretaste of the heavenly feast that is prepared for us. Dear friends, it is going to be a great and wonderful party. And thank God we don't have to die to get there. We can start that party here and now because of what God's Son has done for us. So here's your invitation. You are welcome. Somehow I am welcome too. And this is because of God's love for us. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith as is printed in the bulletin, which comes from various uh, scripture readings. This is the good news that we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved, if we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Dear friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will gather from north and south, east and west, from sanctuary and from living room, and sit together at the table of the sun in the heavens. And as we prepare to share in this feast that our Lord has provided for us, let us first Come to God in thanksgiving and prayer. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. 
You created the world and called it good, made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained faithful. Thank you, O God, for sending us your Son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and one another, and one another until we feast with him and with all your saints, in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This table belongs not to this church or to me or to this denomination. It belongs to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he invites all who trust in him to come and be fed by his love and his mercy. On the night of his arrest, after giving thanks, Jesus broke bread, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The bread of life given for us. After supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you, and as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. O God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us go forth as beacons of love and hope, inviting all and making them feel welcome to the feast of God's Son in Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with all of us.
today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.